Hey team, Lucen here, and today we are going to learn how to turn a logo into a 3D render in After Effects using Elements 3D. Something like this. Oh, pretty. And this is just a four second animation looped. So let's get right to it. We're going to create a new composition. Actually, let's do a whole new project. New project, new composition, 1920 by 1080, frame rate 30, resolution full, duration. I guess we don't need the 30 seconds. Let's just keep it at eight seconds. Click OK. Layer, new, solid. Let's get a black background. Name it B Black PG. And then once you have Video Copilot Element 3D installed, you will go to Layer, New Solid. Let's create, actually this is going to be a mask, a path layer. So let's make this one just bright green and we're going to call this Logo Paths. So we're going to take the tone set of logo, open it up in Illustrator, copy it, and this will work with anything with paths. So you just copy it and then select the logo paths layer and hit paste. And notice it creates paths within that solid. If you press M, these are all the paths that make up that particular logo. So we're gonna layer new, I mean, yeah, layer new solid. We're going to make this one bright pink. Name this one element 3D. And then right here, we're going to go to effect video copilot element. And then we're going to hide the logo paths. So click element 3D. We're going to go to custom layers, custom text and masks, path layer one. Instead of none, we're going to put logo paths and then click scene setup. Once we're in the scene setup, the first thing you're gonna do is hit extrude and boom, we have tone setters logo already in 3D. I'm using a three button mouse so and I have a wheel in the in the middle so when you hit the, when you scroll in and out, this is what happens. When you click the left mouse button and drag around, we are in, you know, you're able to drag around in 3D perspective. If you hold down the middle mouse button and click and drag, you get to pan around. Those are the basic movements that you will need. And that's pretty much it in terms of, you know, moving around. But let's make this logo look a little bit more cool. So once you have the presets installed of the bevels, I have the physical pack over here. And these are all a bunch of different bevels that we can add to the logo. So if you want a professional look, we could just click and drag that here, zoom in a bit, and this is a professional looking look. If you want an Oreo look, just click and drag that here, and here's a whole nother style. You want something that's a step, click on here. This one has a nice little, you see it has like three layers of bevels in there. If you want it looking more yellow, there's a nice cool effect right there. Here's a gold one. You can have hours and hours of fun just messing around with the logo. So I have over here, I think it was a three layer one that might have been looking good. I think it was this one that was pretty good. So right here, what you could do is under the extrusion model, hit the little arrow. Maybe it wasn't the three layer one. It was something else. Let me see if I could find it. Ah, it was this one, teal. Boom. I think. Yeah, I think so. So check this out. Under each of, under the extrusion model, we have these three different layers. Glass tint, shiny light copy, and shiny. So with glass tint, if you hit this little blue button, you're able to make it disappear. And you notice that that's the middle part. With the shiny light copy, that is the outer part. And this other shiny is the little black part in the middle. So if you, if you go into each one, let's start with the shiny one and hit the, and go down here where it says edit, bevel, extrude, you're able to make it longer or shorter. 
If you do the shiny light copy, do the same thing with the extrude. You're able to bring that out nicely. And that already is looking kind of cool. But let's make it even cooler. So what we could do is go into the environment. Actually before, yeah, go into the environment. And then right here, we're going to turn on the environment with uh, a background image. So with this background image, we're going to use the Tone Seta City skyline that we have. Under, let's go to effects. I think it's this one. Yep. You see how it has blues and reds and blacks and whites. We're going to use that. Select the texture and hit OK. And notice we already have it sort of reflecting the whole background. Isn't that neat? Um, and let's see, I think we're pretty much done here. Let's go ahead and check it out. Click OK. And here it is. Now over here, I like to add a After Effects camera. So we go to File, New Camera. I like to keep it at 24 millimeters. And then do a new Null Object. We're going to parent the camera with this little pick whip to the Null Object. Rename the Null to Dolly. And make it a 3D layer. Hit the letter P for position. And this is the X, Y, and Z axis. Click and drag the Z to the right, and we're able to zoom in a bit. Click on the Elements 3D layer, and under the Element Options, see uh, Group 1, uh, Particle Replicator. Right here, we have the Rotation. And right here, we're just able to manipulate whatever we want. So if we wanted to rotate it on the X axis, we can and animate this with an After Effects. If you want to rotate it on the Y, we can, as well as the Z, and a plethora of other options that we can mess around with. But those are the basic ones right now, and that's what we're going to mess with. So right here, I'm going to organize our layers in the project panel. We're going to go to, we're going to create a new folder called Comps. Throw that into the Comps layer and name this one Tone Set a Logo. I'm going to create another folder and make it called graphics and look for the same background that we have right over here. Click and drag it in there, bring it into the layers above the black background, bring it in so that we could see everything. And I'll take the black background, put it above actually, hit the letter T for opacity and make this 50%. And already we have a pretty cool looking logo. But now let's animate it, right? So we need, let's go up to, let's say, four seconds. I hit the letter N to end the animation there, but, or to end the, the, the scene, the comp there. Let's go to, let's click on Element 3D, go to the Effects Control Panel. Um, go all the way to zero and on the Y axis. Yeah, we want to make it spin, right? So we're going to start with the little timer to add a keyframe. Move forward a full four seconds. And then right here where it says zero X, we're just going to make that one time. So when we go over here and hit space bar, he is spinning around one time. Now, it's a little fast for me, um, but let's make sure, let's make it to the eight second mark. Hit the element 3D layer, hit the letter U to bring up the keyframes, and then bring that to eight seconds. So now we do it, yeah, it's a little bit sexier. But now we see the, the logo backwards. You don't ever want to see the logo backwards. So let's move on to right where the logo if you hit command and right, you can go keyframe by keyframe. So I'm going to get right to the middle somewhere. I think like right there. And I'm going to hit the key combination command shift D. You see that it duplicates the layer, but also cuts it right there in the middle. So it's kind of a nice shortcut. I'm going to scrub through. I'm going to skip the backwards logo. And right here again, I'm going to go to a place where we're right in the middle or so. 
I think this one looks good. Um, and then hit option left bracket on the keyboard to cut the, the, the logo in to where I had the cursor. So now I'm here in the middle, but now it's a jump cut, right? You see how it just jumps? So what we're gonna do is just blend it a little bit. So I'm gonna bring, uh, let's say this, a few keyframes up. I'm gonna drag this a few keyframes up. So I'm gonna drag it a little bit more. This one a little bit more that way. Go to the beginning for the top one, hit the letter T for opacity. Hit the opacity, I'm gonna bring this to zero. Go all the way to where we're over here. Go to 100. And when we're over here for the bottom layer, also hit the letter T for opacity. Go to hit the keyframe and at 100, we're gonna scrub through to when we're here and make it zero. So now when we go backwards and press spacebar, no one will ever know <laughs> it did disappear. Oh, and it did disappear, so we just need to extend, actually not even extend it. Now we could just have it up to four seconds, hit the letter N, extend this one frame, and we should be good, or maybe to right here. So now, there you go. But it doesn't look uh, bright, right? So because this is just an element 3D layer, let's go to the first one. And let's, uh, let's have it on an angle, maybe like that, just so we could see the sides a little bit. We hit on element 3D and untwirl the effect. Then like just any other layer in After Effects, you could go to Effect, Color Correction, and I like to use Curves. The curves I like to grab right from the middle, bring it up a bit, go to the top, bring it down a bit, or let's say more up actually, and then from the bottom over here, kind of make like an S shape. And it usually gives me a nice, a nice sort of effect. This is really to your taste. Um, so I brightened up the, the tone set a bit. This is before, this is after. And then I like to add, let's see, what I really want to do is bring out the these little uh, jagged edges here. I want to be able to see that more, the details of it. So if we go to color correction and go to let's say brightness and contrast, and then just increase the contrast a bit, a lot of bit. Uh, let's do, not brightness and contrast, let's do levels. Color correction, levels. Yeah, I like levels. So we get to bring the this right arrow over here, bring this in, bring the left arrow, bring that in, and then bring the middle arrow, and then just mess around. Yeah, it's looking kind of cool. Again, this is all to your taste. What I'm looking for is some contrast, but legibility. I don't want this to be too colored especially in the front so what's interesting is what we can also do is go back to elements hit scene setup and mess with the reflection or the refraction of the of the actual logo over here so you see how there's a lot of lot of reflection going on we can uh target the, the front bevel which is this one shiny light copy in the edit panel um, you could really mess with a bunch of this stuff and again, spend hours on it. But um, I think if you just go to, I'm looking for Fresnel. Ah, Reflection, Fresnel by, or right here, Fresnel, 0 0.81. If we just bring this up, you see how it just disappeared? And this is little Fresnel, this is a lot of Fresnel. So I just want to make it so that you can barely see it. So 0 0.88 kind of looks cool. Maybe, yeah, let's try that, click OK. You see how it faded it just a little bit more? Maybe we go a little bit more and do 0 0.9. Let's try 0 0.93. Click OK and see how it faded it. So now when we hit spacebar, oh, we need to do it to the other logo. You see how we didn't do it to this one because we split it? So because it's an After Effects layer, we could simply untwirl these, hit uh, shift click on both of them to select, hit command C to copy, element 3D, 
to the, the, the next one, right? And then hit Command V to paste. And then we have the same effect going on. So now when we press play, it looks like it's glitching out. And there you have it. We could render this out and we have a logo loop of some sort. Definitely save. You always want to save. I'm going to put just version 2 over here. And go ahead and render. We're good to go. So that's pretty much it. I know that was in a flash, but um, with every detail of After Effects and Element 3D, you could go in and have a lot of fun and just tweak a bunch of stuff. Um, but that was like a very quick way of going about it. And uh, enjoy. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always Google it or hit me up. I'll see you guys later. Thank you.